Greetings, hello again, and welcome to John's Bible Study Channel. Today we're talking about, are you doing what God said? Let's get right into prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this time, Father. I thank you for the subscribers. Father, uh, I pray for each and every one of them. Bless them indeed, uh, and those who will come. I thank you, Father, for the sharing of your word. Uh, Holy Spirit, give me discernment. Uh, give me wisdom and direction. Give me clarity of mind to deliver God's word uh, with with great clarity and understanding. Father, we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the question today is, are you doing what God said? You might say, well, John, I don't even hear God's voice. And that's, that's another uh, lesson. But we have sometimes God doesn't speak audibly. To us, sometimes he does. Uh, he may open doors. He may, uh, you know, give you opportunity that you otherwise would not have had, and and you'll know it because it's really unique, right? Uh, he speaks to our circum in our circumstances uh, through other people. If you're looking for God's answer, he will highlight it when he gives you that exact answer, right? In this case, not so for Jonah. He actually told him what to do. So let's go to the book of Jonah, chapter 1, starting from verse 1 to 3, and it reads, Now, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But, but Jonah <laughs> rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. So this is not just anybody. That's commissioning Jonah to do something. This is the Lord of hosts, uh, you know, the most high God, uh, El Elyon, God of gods, Lord of lords, the Lord of hosts, Yahweh Sabaoth, builder of all things, home of justice, true pasture, the Lord who sanctifies you. Um, this is who's giving Jonah the assignment. <laughs> And he just says, well, I'm going to run, you know, like, like God can't find him, right? So never let that be said of us. If God instructs you, if he gives you an assignment, you work on that thing until it's done. You don't come off it. You stay focused. Don't be distracted. There's a lot of distractions nowadays with our phones, our tablets, television, video games. No, if God's given you something, I'm not saying you can't do that as a break, right? You know, we, we can't, sometimes we can't focus on one thing for hours and hours and hours, right? Because it's just too much. You need a break. So sure, you can watch, you know, a show or, or play a round of video games or, you know, surf the net for stories or whatever, but get back to what God has called you to do. Amen? Uh, Jonah, verse four to nine, but the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God. That's small g, meaning they're, they're pagan, you know, idols. They're crying out to them like they can do something, and that's obviously not the case. They can't, right? And they hurled the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. Sorry, I'll take care of that. Was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise! Call out to your God. 
Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we may not perish. And when he says, call out to your God, that was still small g in the scripture, meaning not the God, but, you know, a little pagan idol or something. And Jonah, of course, he knew the one true God, and that's exactly who he was running from. Uh, to, by the way, to hurl means to throw an object with great force. So God hurled the wind at the ocean, which became very angry to the point where they thought they were going to lose their lives. So, so let's look at this for a minute. Jose, uh, Jonah disobeys God, right? And his disobedience just doesn't affect him. It affects other people. You know, the, the uh, merchant who put cargo on that ship to go to Tarshish, somebody on the other side was waiting for that. You know, they paid a shipping fee for that. And it's not going to get there because they had to throw it overboard. Remember, disobedience sometimes involves other people. Don't think that somehow you're going to be the only one affected. Not necessarily so. So this is why we should be obedient to what God says, that we should yield, we should surrender to the will and purposes of God. Why? Because that's the most efficient, probably the fastest way to get you from where you are to your God-given destiny. Amen? You know, that take take that very seriously. Because being being disobedient uh, hurts people. Yourself, of course. It might delay you, might might God may hold back your blessings that He's stored up for you. Uh, there's other people maybe attached to those blessings that they're gonna be blessed because of you and because you're being disobedient. You're delaying them as well. And in this case, uh, they weren't they were delayed and they had to throw cargo overboard. So keep that in mind. Uh, and they said to one or come, they said to one another, excuse me, come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. Now that's actually a, a Levitical thing. The priest would cast lots. Now here they are casting lots and the, and the answer works if it falls on Jonah, right? So even if they were pagans, <laughs> God made this, this, the casting of lots to fall on his servant, Jonah. So, you know, be careful when, when, you, when you do things and you don't want to confess and, you know, people have a way of going about trying to find out who it is. It's going to fall on you because that's God's plan and purpose, right? Even though it's pagan, uh, or there are pagans involved, God's can, God can still use them to get the outcome that he wants. Amen. Verse, uh, we're in Jonah, verse, uh, I believe it's verse one. Um, and I mean, it's chapter one, uh, and it's verse uh, seven, verse eight. Then they said to him, oh, uh, verse seven. And they came, they said to one another, let's cast lots so we may know whose account this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. <laughs> it doesn't get any, any, any worse than this. They said to him, tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation and where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I mean, like, you know, four or five questions in succession. They, they, they believed those lots. They believed it, you know, and they were right. Uh, so, so Jonah finally confesses from a, from a slumber below deck. Now he's having to confess everything. Um, and he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. And um, we, we, we know where that leads, right? 
We know where that leads. So Jonah has to fess up to what happened. And um, and he said, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong verse here. Just trying to get back to our story. We were That was verse nine we were at. Verse 10, this terrified them and they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them. The sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down for us? They're asking the man of God, right? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. So when you're caught, don't don't make it worse by by continuing to lie. Just confess it. Tell the truth, right? Tell the truth. Let the chips fall where they may. It's going to be better for all. Amen. So he tells them what to do, but being men who fear the Lord, they said, Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not. For the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. Even though he, even though he confessed it, they're calling him innocent. For you, Lord, have done as you've pleased. So they took Jonah and threw him overboard. And the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. So basically, they, they, uh, they were converted <laughs> from their pagan practices to now serving the true God. They made vows. What do you think those vows were? Lord, if you save me from this, you know, I'll forever serve you. I'll, I'll turn away from my idols. I'll be a good man, good husband, right? They made vows. So it, it wasn't totally a bad thing. Jonah's disobedience caused them to turn from the path of destruction, amen? 17, now the Lord provided a huge fish. Uh, to swallow Jonah. Now, it didn't say whale, it said fish. A whale is a mammal. A fish is cold-blooded. So it had to be a fish large enough to swallow a man whole. Can you imagine? And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. By the way, uh, at a, um, physiologically, a whale's throat isn't large enough to accommodate a human, right? They eat plankton, so plankton are very small. He could not, it couldn't have been a whale. And the Bible says what it means. It said fish. So when you see the story of Jonah and the little, you know, caricatures and the cartoons, and it shows a whale, incorrect fish. So... <clears throat> Jonah thrown over the sea. God made a fish to gather him. And in the belly of that fish, Jonah makes a prayer and supplication. The, this prayer involves the action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly through kneeling or bending down in the form of a plea. Well, he wasn't bending. He was probably lying down. Um, it's the most humbling of prayer types and takes total surrender and loss of control. In the belly of a fish, you're surrendered. You're <laughs> you have no choice. And all he had to do, why did this happen? Because he did not do what God said. Jonah is in the Bible to be a lesson for all of us, that we must do what God says. Amen. 
Anytime you disobey God, a prayer of thanksgiving for his mercy and grace is a great way to start the conversation. But it should conclude with repentance, forgiveness, asking for forgiveness. Repentance means to turn around completely. Not, 108, uh, not a, a 360 degrees, but 180 degrees from that direction to that direction. So, and again, the best way we can confess our sins, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So this is what happens when we confess our sins to God. He forgives and purifies. Forgives and purifies. What does that do? That brings, it mends their broken relationship. The one relationship that was broken due to sin, it, it repairs that relationship. So now you're back in fellowship with the Lord. Favorable, righteous, meaning right standing, relationship with God. That's what repentance, that's what confessing does. Right, according to the New Testament. So Jonah recommits, God recommits, excuse me, Jonah's assignment in Jonah 3 1. And he says the exact same thing to Jonah that he told him before. What did, what did he tell him before? He says, I want you to go to Nineveh. It's that exact same thing. You notice what he didn't say. Uh, he didn't say, like, you, you see, Jonah, you see what happens when you don't, no, none of that. So that should be a lesson to us too. When people do us wrong or, or they made a mistake or whatever, do not bring up, you know, don't browbeat them. Don't harangue them because they made a mistake because your day's coming when you're going to make a mistake and you're not going to like it either. Even God himself who had caused this, the tempest on the sea. People are throwing valuable cargo overboard. And, you know, all that happened. You know, people lost. There was loss involved. And yet God still did not condemn him. He just said, listen, go back. Right? You notice he didn't say that. He didn't say, you know, this is what happens when you're disobedient. This is that. No. No. Uh, uh, Micah chapter 7, verse 19 says, He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. In the depths of the sea. So Jonah finally goes. He finally goes. And uh, he begins to warn the inhabitants of the city. It took him a full day to reach the entire city. Of course, the king heard. Uh, let me see here. Well, he was, he was already warning the city, you know, to, to repent. Didn't get to the king yet, but he was going from one end to the other. And eventually the king heard. And summoned him. Jonah 3, verse 6, is, 6 to 10. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. This was his proclamation he issued in Nineveh. Now, we can stop right there for a minute. We're talking about a king. Uh, the kings of Nineveh, especially the father, I forget his name, was a wicked king and he would do things to people. Uh, he wouldn't just, you know, imprison them. He would torture them, like peel their skin off and all kinds of crazy things like that. Men, women, children, he didn't care. So here now is, this is probably his son. I'll... I'll I'll do some research, search on that, and I'll put it in the notes. Either way, a king of Nineveh 
the Israelites were afraid of them for a reason. He humbles himself, takes off his royal robes, right? Covers himself with sackcloth and sat down in the dust. And God knew who he was. He, he saw all the wicked things he did. In fact, he says in the beginning of Jonah that the wickedness of Nineveh has reached his ears, has reached him in heaven. All right? Verse uh, 7, Jonah chapter 3, verse 7. This is a proclamation he issued in Nineveh by the creed. Excuse me, by decree of the king, by decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Everybody's fasting. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and the animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways. And their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. So he's, he's basically saying, hey, this is a Hail Mary. Now, this is a football term. Uh, if you're not into sports, when you're at the fourth quarter, like the very end of the game, you've been fighting up and down the field, and now this is the last play of the game, and what the, what they would do is they would call a Hail Mary. They would the quarterback would they'd snap the ball, he would he would uh, step back, and then he would throw the ball all the, as far as he could, hoping that his his receiver. We'll catch it, winning the, the entire game, right? Because when, when a receiver's on the field, he's, he's got coverage, right? There's somebody else, or it could be two people covering him, and, and they can get the ball. So it's like the last ditch ever is the last play, and you're hoping for the best. Well, this is a Hail Mary. He says, who knows? This is a king speaking. <laughs> who knows? Maybe he'll... But maybe he won't destroy us, right? So he himself, all of the people and the animals wore sackcloth and ashes, didn't eat or drink anything. Verse 10, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented, meaning he took back what he said he was going to do to them and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. In other words, he changed his mind. The behavior of the people, the behavior of the king changed his mind. Do you know, uh, you know, God being a king, you know, usually when kings decree and order something, it's done and they can't take it back. Usually. God himself changed his mind. Isn't that amazing? What changed it? It wasn't even prayer. The king didn't even, he didn't know enough to pray. He just said, do this. Stop your wickedness. Stop your, your savagery. Stop, stop all violence. Perhaps, who knows? He was right. And that's exactly what happened. Ah, here it is. So the king of Nineveh at this time was King Shalomancer the third. He was known for making the black obelisk. Now in London Museum, he was a warrior king. Even so, he knew he knew enough to humble himself before a holy God. Jonah's obedience was key in saving an entire nation of approximately one hundred and twenty thousand people. So he was the son. His father was a piece of work. He was. He was a wicked, vile, bloodthirsty king. 
So here's his son who does better than his, and than his dad did. I mean, in history, you'll find that he ended up doing some of the same things and they ended up being destroyed anyway. But at this juncture, they listened to the prophet of God and the king followed. He, he did what he said, hey, look, fast, no, no one, even the animals, do not drink, sackcloth, ashes. And God saw, he saw what they did and they were spared, amen. By being, by doing what God said, when the king did what God said, he was better than Jonah. He heard the first time, he says, okay. Jonah ran the first time he heard. He did better than Jonah, and what happened? God honored him, amen, and he'll honor you. If you, if you listen to the word of the Lord, if God commissions you to do something, or perhaps your pastor says, you know what, I, I've been watching you, and I think you'd be a good fit for this ministry. Would you, would you mind serving in that? Follow. Hear the heart of God. Pray about it, of course. But opportunities like that aren't, aren't often, you know. And, and, and so how do you know God didn't speak to him? And he, he brought you before his face. And he says, this would be the right person for that. You know, that's, that's where those requests can come from. They, they can come from the inspiration and inclination of, of the will of God, amen? So be open, right? Be open to obey and quickly what God said. Notice this king, uh, Shalomancer, how he responded and quickly. He didn't wait. He, he didn't say, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna consider this in a week. No, he took off his robes right then, boom sackcloth and ashes, and then he made that decree that everybody else do that and, and, and fast right away. That's, that's, the, that's the right way. That's the textbook way to respond to God immediately, right? Don't be a Jonah. I'm not, hey, I'm speaking to myself here. You know, don't, don't be like Jonah and, and go the other direction. And then God's got to arrange a, a fish taxi to take you where you're supposed to be in the first place, right? Amen. Jonah's obedience was the key in saving an entire nation. You know, an entire nation. And you can ask God as well for things. You can, you can seek the Lord's face. And he will hear. Here's another... Um, Here's another act of obedience. Luke 17, verses 11 to 16. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. He was going into a village. Ten men who had leprosy met him. Now, you have to know that that's not a coincidence. Jesus knew that they were going to be there, right? <clears throat> they met him. They stood at a distance. Why? Because they were unclean. <clears throat> if you have leprosy, you're considered ceremonially unclean and you can't touch anyone. You shouldn't even be out during the day. You should be far, right, sequestered far from people. And uh, they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they didn't happen immediately. As they went, as they were obedient to do what Jesus said, they were healed. Many times our obedience is the same way. We, we may not see the results of what we've been praying to God for until as we go, as we start on the process of doing whatever it is he's asked us to do. I'm in that position right now. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm preparing for something for the summer. He, here, it's, it's May, right? Uh, but hey, I'm, I'm gonna be obedient. I'm gonna prepare like it's so. I don't, I don't see the resources right now. I don't see you know, everything that I need right now to do it, but I'm going, I, I'm, as I go, amen? 
God will bring the answer. So let that be a testimony unto you, right? So, <clears throat> obedience, doing what God said, will even work for those who don't know God. We saw that with Shalomancer. He, he didn't know the God of the Jews. They were, they were idol worshipers, right? Yet, yet, God answered their prayers. God, God did not destroy them like he said he would. So how much more for those who call him Father, Savior, and Lord? Amen. So if, so if you're not in a place where you should be, you said, you know, Brother John, I, I, I get it. You know, God has told me to do X, Y, Z, and I haven't done that thing. Or I've, I've been procrastinating. I've been distracted. We can fix that right now. We can fix that today. Right? So let's, let's pray about that first, and then we'll, we'll have another prayer thereafter, okay? So Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this lesson. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing the truths of the scriptures concerning being obedient to you and doing what it is that you've asked of us. Father, I pray, I pray for every person who's watching this video within the sound of my voice, that Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would you would convict them, you would, you would move upon their heart, and that, Father God, you would encourage them to get back on the path. It's not too late to get back on the path to doing what it is you told them to do. Father, give them strength, uh, give them courage, Father. Give them peace, give them the tenacity that they need, Father, to continue the path, to complete the task that you told them. I decree and declare that it's done. I decree and declare that you will be successful. I decree and declare I bind all fear and trepidation about whatever this is. I bind it in Jesus' name and I speak over you courage, strength, and power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will complete the task with great success in Jesus' name. Amen. So you say, Brother John, I don't know. I don't have a relationship with God. Well, we can take care of that too. Uh, uh, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but shall have an everlasting life. Will you say a quick prayer with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Welcome me in you to your kingdom. Forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name, I confess with my mouth right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If that was you, would you kindly send me a comment at, uh, in the comment section? Let me know that you prayed the prayer. I'd appreciate that. Uh, like and subscribe. If you like the content, share it, please. Uh, and if this blessed you today, uh, will, will you will you say a prayer for, for, for this ministry that we continue and that we continue to be able to have the time and resources to share these videos, to make more, amen, to benefit God's people. Thank you so much for being with me. I hope this blessed you uh, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.